Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we are actually, this is part two of a Medicare uh, series we've been doing back to back this week. My name is Amanda and I'm with the Tampa Hillsborough County Public Library and we are very happy to, happy to welcome back Rebecca McDonald, who is with the Shine Network, and she is going to be telling us this evening about Medicare financial assistance. So before we get right into her presentation, I am going to share a book recommendation with you. This is a shout out for a book called Maximize Your Medicare. And this is about uh, understanding your benefits, how to use them, and how to get the most out of your benefits. Now, what I like about this book is you can find it on many of our platforms. You can find it in our regular catalog. You can order it for uh, curbside pickup or regular library pickup, or you can find it electronically in our OverDrive service or our Libby app that goes with OverDrive or streaming instantly on Hoopla. So if you're ready to get started reading that book tonight, it is available on Hoopla, streaming instantly, no hold. But let's go ahead. I am going to switch the presentation over to Rebecca so she can pull up her slides. Okay, it looks like the presentation is up. I'm gonna go ahead and take off my camera and I will be back at the end for questions. Shine, okay, so just a couple things to explain what Shine is. Uh, I'm a volunteer with Shine. Uh, Shine is one of the many programs that are available through the Department of Elder Affairs. They have a lot of those resources, so all, all of us Floridians, seniors and, and the disabled can live better and age well and try to stay as independent as long as possible. Our particular program, SHINE, stands for Serving Health Insurance Needs of Elders, and that's why we say SHINE. And what we do is we provide free and unbiased health insurance counseling. Um, we don't make your decisions for you. We just give you the tools that you can make your own decisions. So as I said, it's free and unbiased. We're not an insurance company, and we don't sell insurance. We just give you information and the tools to make your own informed decision and my cat's going to join in this I guess I better before we started but it really didn't last very long so all of the programs and resources that are available to the Department of Elder Affairs can be accessed through various aging and disability resource centers ours is called Senior Connection Center we serve five different counties Hillsborough, Hardy, Highlands, Polk and Manatee so this number if you don't leave with anything else written down tonight, you should jot this number down, 1-800-96-ELDER, 1-800-963-5337. This is where you're gonna start. When you say, I don't know who to call, this is the number you're gonna call. So if you hear this presentation tonight and wake up in the morning and say, I don't, I don't remember a word she said, you can call this number and say, well, I heard this thing about financial assistance last night, but I don't remember anything. So I'll get a counselor back to you and it'll be a counselor from your own county. So when you're talking about health plans or choosing health plans, you'll be speaking to a counselor that's familiar with the plans and uh, the resources that are available in your county. So that's, that's a good number to know. Um, Shine, what, what do we do? We do everything that has to do with Medicare which always only used to be original Medicare, uh, Part A and B, but now they have Medicare Advantage plans called Part C. We help people with Medicare prescription drug coverage, Part D, Medicare Supplement Insurance or Medigap. Uh, this is Extra Help for Prescription Drugs is one of the two financial assistance programs I'm gonna talk about tonight. Um, we, we can help with applications and give you information about that. We also will, uh, um, address Medicare fraud and abuse, which with all the COVID and everything else, people are out there trying to get your money for free COVID stuff, and there is no such thing, so don't answer your phone. Don't hang up when they call. Um, the other fi financial assistance program is called the Medicare Savings Program. So that is what I'll get that into a little more detail later on in the presentation. So counselors, you can talk to you about long-term care planning, and it does take a while to get into those programs. So if you see that down the road, I'd advise you to get started now. Of course, Medicare complaints and appeals. If Medicare denies charge or something and you feel it's legitimate, um, you can call the SHINE number, the elder, 1-800-96-ELDER, and uh, a SHINE counselor will get back to you and we'll help you with the appeal process. So those are all the things that we can help and address with you. So this is one of the handouts and um, you probably will be referring to back. So hopefully you have the capability to print this out. What this is, 
is it gives the limit, it gives the asset and resources limit for these two financial assistance programs. I don't think they did the back of the, back of the paper, which uh, tells you what you need as far as like, you know, things to have handy with you, like your assets and, and your checking account and your savings account. But uh, when we screen patients, or screen clients, We'll say, do you make more or less than one thousand twelve dollars? You know, we don't ask them specifically, but we see. So, if they're in the ballpark for either program, uh, they they tell us our motto is "When in doubt, fill it out." So, uh, we'll screen you, and we actually our our senior connection center is lucky because we have counselors there that help people with the application. So we get you connected to one of our people that can help with the application and they get their information over the phone and help you fill out the application and get it sent in. So we're very lucky in our Senior Connection Center in our area to be able to do that. So uh, like I say, this is what we use and so that we can say, oh, I think this person qualifies for maybe the third level of extra help or the fourth level of assistance with the Medicare Savings Program. So this is kind of what, this is a very well-worn piece of paper by the time we get through our, our time helping with people. The Medicare Savings Program, MSP, it is, um, goes through the Department of Children and Families. So sometimes it's referred to as limited Medicaid. So a lot of time when we're talking to people and they say, I have Medicaid, we have to kind of keep asking them questions about do you pay your Part A and Part B premiums? And they say no. So we know that they have this um, Medicare savings program. It's funded by state and federal finances. And of course, the eligibility is based on the income and resources. And the level of assistance that you will receive is based on what that income and resources are, what they are. Um, the applications go through Department of Children and Families. Now we we don't shine, we, we don't make the determination whether you're eligible or not. We just help you plug in the numbers and help you get the applications in. So, um, but for a lot of people that didn't even know these programs were there to get some help with the application, it's, it's quite helpful too. So, so if you qualify for Medicare Savings Program, um, you will get your Medicare part at the, the highest level of assistance, which means it's the people with the lowest income the highest level of assistance will get their Part A premium if they have one paid and their Part B premium paid, which in 2021 is going to be $148.50. So it is going up a little bit. And the deductibles and the Medicare Part B co-insurances, 20% that's not covered by Part B, and any co-payments. So lowest income people get those benefits from the highest level of the Medicare Savings Program, and that's can really be a lot, you know, if you're not having that $148 taken out of your check and you don't have to pay a deductible. So, um, and then it, as the different levels, like the least help, the least uh, of the system based on income and assets, but possibly just pay the Part B premium and not the deductibles and co-insurance, which is still can be a big help because that Part B premium is, is a big chunk of money every month for people. So. Uh, that way they can maybe put that money towards groceries. So this this program with the with a monthly premium goes to Department of Children's and Families and sometimes can be referred to as limited Medicaid. And I think they do get a gold Medicaid card. It's not full Medicaid, it's just limited Medicaid because it's helping you with your Part A possibly and Part B premium. All income is included in the application. That would be pensions and annuities, any alimony you get, income and wages, and any contributions. Um, if you have a, a child living at home and they contribute X number of dollars to your monthly income, monthly house upkeep, whatnot, uh, that is considered income. There you go. Um, so anything that's considered income, uh, rental property, anything like that, and that all goes under income. Resources, bank accounts and cash on hand, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and IRAs, additional real estate, and the cash value of a life insurance policy over 2500 
dollars. They don't count your um, primary, where you live, your primary house, where you're living, and they don't count your car unless it's like an antique car, and that would be considered like a, uh, you know, cash on hand kind of thing. You know, that's considered something like that. So not your house and not your car, but everything else. Uh, it sounds like a lot of things, you know, that they consider, but um, people with lower incomes, you know, they just don't have any of those things. They don't even have to think about it. So they don't uh, have to worry about it. So when when the person would call you to ask you about the um, application, you want to have on hand, you know, the, all of your checking accounts, your bank account numbers, any of your um, mutual funds, your life insurances, just have all of that financial information in front of you because they do need to record that and send it off to uh Department of Children's and Family Services. So it sounds complicated, but it's really not. They see how much money you have, they see how many resources you have, and if you don't have much, then you probably will qualify for the Medicare Savings Program and get a break on your Part B, Part A premium. The other financial assistance program is called Extra Help. Um, it's called Low Income Subsidy, but we usually refer to it as Extra Help. This is administered through the Social Security. So Medicare Savings Program is through DCF, Medicaid. Extra help goes through Social Security. And it only provides assistance with prescription drug costs. But if you're taking brand medications, that could be quite helpful. So again, eligibility is based on income and resources, going back to that, that one handout that we had. Um, income and resources there's like four different levels of, of assistance what it does is it'll give you minimal drug costs in the coverage gap and, and you have really low co-pays on your medication so um, again if you have brand medications some of the new insulin uh, things and some of the respiratory inhalers and stuff uh, they're really expensive and if people qualify can qualify for extra help then that's huge because a lot of these new medications they're coming out with that really help disease entity and help save lives and stuff, they just, they're so expensive that people can't afford them. So, you know, if you can qualify for extra help, that's, that's a lot. Um, also, if you have extra help, if you qualify for extra help, you have the ability to change plans once every three months, once a quarter during the year. Um, I, I I don't know why you would, but if for some reason, you know, maybe you've got, you don't like your doctor, you want to change Medicare Advantage plans, or for whatever reason, the point is that with extra help, you can change, and these are the only people that are allowed to change outside of open enrollment or people that are around their initial enrollment period or have a special enrollment period. Uh, people with extra help can change their plan once every three months in a year, once in a year. So I, I don't know if too many take advantage of that. I mean, when you tell people that, they're not even sure what it means, but it is a perk of getting extra help. So I'll just tell you about it. Extra help benefits. So as I said, there's levels of extra help. So the lowest two levels of income and resources, that's the people that have the least amount of money, um, <clears throat> they can qualify for extra help. They don't have any drug premium, so you're not paying any Part D premium, and there's no deductible. Even if your drug plan has a deductible, if you qualify for extra help, you don't have to pay the deductible. Minimal co-pays, maybe 2 to $8, no matter what. You know, that's, that's even if you've got the brand drugs that are, you know, where the co-pays are like four or $500. Uh, if you qualify for uh, one of the two higher levels of, of assistance, you'll receive a reduced or no premium, get help with your drug premium, and you have a reduced deductible and a percentage of the copay. So it does drop your copays um, quite a bit. So, you know, it, it can be helpful there. Each, either one of the four levels can be assistance because it's helping with the premium. And then if it can get your copays down, even if you've got one drug that's sticking in the side with a really high copay, that would be a big help. It might mean the difference between groceries or buying your medicine kind of thing so um, again this refers back to that handout that we had as far as the, the income and resources and remember like I said when in doubt fill it out it would be 
all you have to do is make a phone call to tell us, I'd like to see if I'm qualified for any, any financial assistance, talk to a counselor, we screen you a little bit more if you're in the ballpark and one of our uh, counselors will help you fill out the applications and get, get the information where it's supposed to be. And then you wait. And if you get it, it's yay. And if not, it hasn't really cost you much other than a phone call and maybe a stamp. So it never hurts to ask. So I also am going to touch on Medicare fraud and abuse because we have to keep this in the uh, spotlight, so to speak. Uh, fraud is when a, a provider bills for a service that was never given or bills for a service that has a higher reimbursement than the service provided. So with office visits, there's a lot of different levels of service. There's like a 15 minute visit, a half hour visit, a 45 minute visit, and then the one where your doctor runs late all day because he spends a lot of time with his patient. But um, that's fraud. Abuse is the payment for, for services that were billed by mistake but should not have been paid. So um, working in doctor's office, there is abuse because people make mistakes. So I just want to encourage you to give your providers time to correct the mistake. It, it could be an honest mistake. It happens. There's a lot of a lot of numbers going through there. So if it happens consistently that they're getting paid and they're not returning the money to Medicare, then that will definitely fall into abuse. Um, but the difference between the two is intent. Like abuse can be just a, a, a clerical error or just, just a mistake. And if, if you give them time to correct it, they have to write a letter back to Medicare so Medicare can reverse it in your records and they have to write a refund check to Medicare. And it's not just something that they punch on their computer. It, it involves a little few man hours. So um, give them a chance, but keep an eye on it. And of course, fraud, you know, that, that's when something that you want to keep an eye on. Um, and the best way to do that, well, the three ways to work on Medicare fraud and abuse is to prevent anyone from getting your Medicare number, okay? So it's kind of a knee-jerk reaction for us to answer a phone call when they say, well, we, there's been some activity on your account and we need your numbers to verify and, and get your account active again or the account's been frozen or blah, 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 and all we hear is frozen. It's not you're not going to be able to have it, this and that and the other thing. And so the first thing out of your mouth is all the numbers that they want. And it's just, it ha everybody has that same reaction. So, and I speak from it. <laughs> as soon as I hung up the phone, I thought, oh, shoot, what did I just do? So, so now I, I've kind of trained myself to listen. I don't usually even answer the phone, but I listen, you know, to what they're saying. What are you asking for? And if they want any of my personal information, I just hang up on them. Um, they're they're very good. They make it sound like your bank or something like that. But you just got to stop and get past that initial panic reflex about you're going to do what with my what, and and then start thinking about what are they saying, what are they asking me for, and then you can start thinking coherently. Um, so just and of course you know just keep your guard your card like you do your social security number. Um, this uh, COVID free COVID nineteen test or whatever it is they're calling on the phone now there's I we see a new income we get notified of about a new scam just about every day there isn't anything out there like that folks uh, social security has your all of your numbers and your address medicare has all of your numbers and your address and your health insurance company has all your numbers and address they're the only ones that should should know it they don't need to ask you for it because they have it and there isn't anybody else that needs to have that information. So check your summary notices with Medicare, with you know, Medicare, it's called a Medicare summary notice. And with your other plans, it's called explanation of benefits. But you get one like every three months, and then it just shows all the services and, that you had for that three months and how much Medicare paid the provider and what your portion is. and um, is kind of where you stand. So it's a good idea to look down through that list and check it. I had a client call one time. He said, I got my, my Medicare summaries and he, he says, they paid somebody several times and I, I don't even recognize the name. I don't know who these people are that Medicare paid. And he was, you know, obviously, wow, what's going on here? So um, I got the information and I just called Medicare and I found out who the people were that they were paying and I called the gentleman back and turned out it was the billing company 
for his physical therapy, which went by a different name. So he just had gone to physical therapy and seen the name of his physical therapy place, and then, but he didn't realize the billing went out under a different name to Medicare, which is fairly common. Um, doing doing business as it's the entity that the, the business entity is what Medicare is going to pay. So. Uh, I called him back and I said, well, that's, you know, the billing company for your physical therapy. So they lined up all the dates and he said, oh, okay, you know, so he did the right thing and he rested comfortably afterwards knowing that nobody was trying to, you know, steal his card or make money off of his Medicare card. So, um, and it doesn't matter if, you know, you, oh, I don't, that seems kind of stupid to call about this one little thing. But, you know, if they do that one little thing to you and a hundred other people, just think how get that gets magnified. So if we can stop it, if you can call us, get our senior Medicare patrol on it, we can track it down and stop it from going after those other hundred people, then you've done a good thing. So, you know, everybody has to just be aware, which of course, if you see something, say something. It just comes down to that. And that's kind of the world we live in today. And it seems to apply to just about everything that we do and say. So. Um, I think there's more slides, but I don't know what's going on here. I think I just lost my program. I am so sorry. I'll just keep talking to you in person here now because we were just about done. So I can talk about the slides. Um, we're they're talking about Medicare problems. I'm going to have a long talk with the security tomorrow. I like client stuff. So, the way to do all of this, of course, is Shine Can Help, and then the number again is 1-800-963-5337, and ask, just say, just tell us, you know, give us an idea of what your problem is. I want to see if I get financial assistance. We're doing open enrollment right now. I want to see if there's a cheaper drug plan. I can't pay for my drugs right now. Do I qualify for extra help? So um, anything, it doesn't matter. Shine's there. You give us a call, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Sometimes it's an easy easy question and sometimes not so easy. So that really is all that I have for this presentation. So hopefully Amanda's still out there. Or they may have lost me. There she is. No, you're, so we're still, you're still with us. I'm going to go ahead, since we lost your slide, I'm going to go ahead and bring up just our closing slide so people have the library contact information. But while I'm doing that, I do want to remind everybody, if you had any questions, and we do have some in the queue, if you had any questions from um, anything for tonight, we're going to go right into the live Q&A right now, so feel free to keep submitting those. So I'm going to go ahead, like I said, and just bring up that closing side briefly, and then we will get back into the questions. So I'm going to go ahead and show that, just to bring it up, and we'll we'll come back to it as well. So. Okay, let's get in to some of these questions from the audience. So I'm going to go ahead and get in this section. So our first question is, okay, uh, well, actually it's a comment and it says, thank you for the information, Rebecca. I'll call to find out if I qualify. So thank you. We hope, and you know, if you need any help with that, you can always uh, you can always contact Shine if you have any questions with the process. So let's move into another question. And the question is, so we know um, that we are in the middle of the open enrollment period. And then can you again, can you share those dates with us again, Rebecca? Because it's very important. We're, we're in the middle, smack October in the middle. 15th, October 15th to December 7th. You have to have any decisions made by midnight December 7th. And then all the changes go into effect on January 1st. Okay, so that is, we know that is to qualify. And if you do want to learn more about that, again, the first part of this presentation about the open enrollment period is in the chat section and it's on our library YouTube channel. But the question is, can you apply for the extra help or the financial assistance at any time? Or does it still have to be within that window for, um, no. for the open enrollment? No, you can qualify, you can um, ask, to, you know, and qualify or whatever anytime there's no time limit so um open enrollment is just for people that want to change plans you're not happy with but people that um you know they already have medicare and find out they're having trouble making ends meet and stuff like that so you can call and ask for help with assistance and we can get the stuff filled out for you anytime 
Okay, so that you can research that at any point in the process and then use those use that information to during the open enrollment period to make your decisions. Okay, so we also had a question about can I uh, can I apply for financial assistance if my spouse is still working? Would that be based on just their income as a retiree or would it be based on the household income? It would be based on the couple's income. Okay. So if your spouse is still working, um, unless if you file, if you file uh, uh, taxes individually, then it could just be you and it wouldn't use your spouse's income. But if you file income taxes as a couple, the IRS has that down as a couple. You'd have, they would include his income. Okay. And you, depending on the, the income, you might still qualify for something. So that's not saying you can't file for it, but. Yeah. It depends on what he's making. You know, if he's not making very much, you may still qualify. It's, it's the, right. Yeah. You know, that you, you don't know until you fill it out, you know. Right. And so it doesn't, it doesn't hurt no. to fill it out. Okay. So we do have, and here's a good question. It's actually about, and I'm glad you touched it on fraud. That could maybe even be its own broadcast or webinar in the future. But, uh, but about the fraud. So if you, if you um, find out there is fraud or you mentioned you, you know, if you feel like somebody has stolen your social security, uh, not so, your Medicare number, or has obtained it somehow, will you temporarily, do they temporarily lose coverage, or how does that work when you report that? To be honest, I, I don't have a good answer for you. I know that one of our senior Medicare patrol volunteers, um, but I don't know, I mean, you want to, of course, report it to social security and to Medicare. I'm sure they put a freeze on that. My guess is you still need to get Medicare benefits, and it's you know it's possible they will just give you a new Medicare number uh, and, and like you know they negate the original one because thank heavens it's not all based on Social Security now. So um, because they're not going to leave you out hanging without any Medicare benefits if you're if that has been stolen. So um, again, I I guess I'm going to have to go and find out the answer. I have to ask one of our senior Medicare. Medicare patrol people and find out what the answer is and so you know we'll both learn from that but I just don't have a good answer that, for you but that's okay because they know the number to contact you at shine if they do want to follow up with that you know and hopefully this is yeah, the, just in case scenario I you know yeah. we hope yeah. but it's good so if you do want to you can always call the number that we shared uh, for shine and that should also be in the chat this is, I guess, related to the fraud or the stolen number. One of our customers wants to know um, if there is unusual activity, will Medicare ever inform you or do you have to really do the detective work yourself with your own statements? Will they reach out to you or will somebody notify you if they see unusual activity? No, they're not. It's not like the credit cards. They're not going to they're not going to notify you because as far as they're concerned, there's been a service done under this Medicare number and they're going to pay their portion to whoever build whoever build them. So it's not like, oh, this person never had this service before. We should check and find out. No, you have to really look, you look at the Medicare, the explanation of benefits of the Medicare summary notice. And if it is a mistake or fraud or something, then, you know, there would be reimbursements or this and that and the other thing. But uh, no, Medicare doesn't ever police what's happening. Okay, so, so you really um, want to go through your statements after you receive service and make sure it all matches up is what you probably want to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it looks like we are getting to the end of our questions. Oh, we just actually had one come in, and this is a good one, especially pertaining to the times that we are in. If, um, if somebody experiences uh, sudden financial hardship, you know, like kind of where we're finding ourselves right now, where your situation changes very quickly, how long would it, you can, you mentioned you can apply at any time for the financial assistance. How long would it take to go into effect if you had a sudden change in your financial income? Well, if you qualify, to, you know, and, and are, are eligible for one of the benefits for the extra help, because we can file that application electronically, it's usually just two or three weeks. Um, okay. Extra help is prescription. With the, with the Me Medicare savings program for the premium, that's a paper application that um, the, the client does have to fill out a couple places and sign and mail in, and that may take a little longer, four to six weeks, I think. But they try to get in process fairly quickly. 
go. Okay, so, so there is to help uh, is quit. A ch so it changes well, the situation. Well, it it will get responded to as the situation changes. It's not like you're in the term and then you have to wait for the next or so on and so yeah. forth. Okay. No, no. Uh -uh. Okay. So, well, yeah, that probably. I think that is the end of our questions for tonight. As a reminder, there are some handouts. The handout you were um, referring to, that is in the handout section on the control panel as a PDF. You can download it right from there, or you can just open it up and save it, and um, it'll open in the web page. So feel free, any of our attendees who are wanting to keep that, retain that, in the li who are watching live right now, that is the benefit you have. And just for anybody else, we are putting this on our library YouTube channel, so you can go back and review some of this information as well. I do want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. And just a reminder uh, how you can reach the library and use the library. You can always contact us via phone at 813-273-3652, or you can get a hold of us electronically uh, seven days a week at hcplc.org slash contact. We have an electronic service that you can do to reach out to us if you have any questions about using the library, upcoming events, getting your card, getting your card back in service. We can always help you with that. Uh, and just to let you know, if you want to know what classes and programs are coming up in the weeks and months to come, you can always check us out on our website at hcplc.org slash events. You can find the whole layout, the calendar of all events that we will have through the end of the year. So once again, I want to say a big thank you to Rebecca McDonald on behalf of Shine. This has been very helpful. Thank you all for listening. Yeah. Yes, we hope we can have you back again soon. So I want to have, wish everyone a good evening, and we hope to see you at a program down the Bye, road. Everybody. Bye. Stay safe.